The last six weeks, I didn't drink alcohol or do drugs. I did not eat any unhealthy foods. I didn't masturbate. I didn't watch Netflix or any other non-educational videos, and I did not look on my social media. I took cold showers every single day. I meditated twice a day for 10 minutes. I read 30 pages every single day, and I did two 30-minute workouts every single day, one of which was outside. My name is Thomas Mulder, and in this video, I will review my six-week monk mode challenge and how I used my unfair advantage to pull this off. Let me start off this video by sharing what is monk mode and then later on in the video I'll talk about how I did this uh, and of course why I did this. So monk mode is something that is talked about by some entrepreneurs, people like Iman Gatsi talk about this. It's basically a period of time where you restrict yourself from quick dopamine so you can be more productive and focus on your business. I sometimes refer to it as a dopamine detox as well. Now, of course, you can argue if you're alive, you're still getting dopamine. So it's not a complete cutoff. It's something that I think is pretty similar. You are restricting yourself from things like bad food, alcohol, stuff that giving you a quick dopamine boost. Of course, the term monk mode already tells you a little bit. You're sort of living like a monk in a modern world, focused on working on your business. Now, my monk mode maybe looked a little bit different than things that you've seen in other videos. I'll make sure to put up a list on the screen, uh, but basically I skipped all the bad things that I just summed up in the intro of this video, uh, but then I added some good habits to it as well, such as taking a cold shower every day, doing two 10 minute meditations every single day, doing two 30 minute workouts every day, one of which was outside and then reading 30 pages. That's just for six weeks strict without any breaks. Now, the first question you have is probably why on earth would you do this? First benefit is focus and productivity. This is something I already mentioned. And I would say this is the number one reason why people get into this in the first place. Because if you are doing monk mode, the way I experience it, if you are watching Netflix, if you are, I don't know, watching porn, watching social media, you are getting a lot of input. All right, and maybe you're not aware of this, but you are actually thinking about this throughout your entire day, which means that let's say you have work. So of course I'm an entrepreneur, so I have my business. Next to it, I'm watching Netflix, I'm watching porn, I am watching social media and maybe other distractions. And this is all information that I'm processing in my brain. Throughout the day, when I'm not aware of it, because you are thinking pretty much 24 seven, but most of the time you're not aware of it. And when I'm thinking about this unawarely, I am thinking about all the things that I'm putting into my brain. And this is a big, big distraction. You are thinking about this even if you think it doesn't bother you. Now, something I've been practicing for the last four years is mindfulness. So I have become more aware of my thoughts and I can assure you that you are thinking about stuff that is absolute garbage. As I started doing mindfulness, I just got more and more aware of my thoughts and I realized that I'm thinking about things that I'm seeing on social media, movies that I'm watching. If you're watching a series, this is something that I personally noticed a lot is if I'm watching a series on Netflix, I am thinking about this a lot throughout the day. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was watching this series called Lucifer. It's a series about the devil. It's it's like a comedy kind of a series. It's, it's absolute nonsense and absolutely useless. But I noticed that I was thinking about this series quite a lot throughout the day. And I'm actually thinking about it in a way that I'm looking forward to the evening so I can watch this series again. Now, of course, one of the reasons why you're thinking about this so much is that you're getting instant dopamine from doing these things, We're looking on social media, watching Netflix, it's giving you instant dopamine and it's a lot more fun instantly than doing your work. Now you can probably imagine what happens if you skip all this. Like if the only thing that you're focusing on is work. Now I must say I'm also listening to podcasts. So when I'm running, when I'm working out or when I'm eating, I'm not working, I'm just watching or listening a podcast, but that's also educational and purely about business. So my mind 24 seven is just business, business, business. And the fun thing is I'm even noticing this in my dreams. When I'm doing all these other things that are distracting me, I'm actually dreaming about this. But when I'm focused on I'm doing a monk mode in my dreams, it's even about business. This just shows that your mind is so focused on the thing that you want to get done that it just helps you focus and be a lot more productive. Benefit number two, I've experienced that I'm more calm and my default happiness state is better. So I'm more calm in a sense that I'm worrying less, I'm stressing less, uh, which probably also has to do with the first benefit that there's just less garbage in my mind, but also because of the meditations and just having no distractions and just having this pure focus automatically just increases my happiness state. Yeah, I'm just experiencing less 
stress, I feel like I'm just more grateful, more happy, more aware, more focused. I believe focus equals happiness. There's a couple studies that actually prove this too. Um, people that are working focused for longer periods and just have a better focus in general are often happier too. So um, yeah, all this combined just makes you a happier person. Benefit number three is control. And with control, I mean a couple different things. The first one is your ability to control your mind. And this all goes back to benefit number one. There's less distractions, just makes it easier to control your thoughts and control your mind. Actually, less distractions combined with the meditations. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing these meditations. I just saw a video of Iman Gatsi explaining his monk mode. And I think one of his non-negotiables, what he's talking about, is a meditation. That's the reason why I do meditations every single day for the past four or five years. Combine this with less distractions just puts you in a position where it's a lot easier to control your thoughts and a lot easier to control bad thoughts, especially. For the dropshippers out there, I have a perfect example I always use is if you're working on your business and your Facebook account gets banned and it's your only source of income, the immediate reaction is to get a lot of stress and maybe be angry as well. You have all these bad thoughts. You start thinking about all my income disappear. What's going to happen now? How am I going to pay my team? How to go pay for my house? You're going to th start thinking of worst case scenarios immediately. And this is just your stress response is natural, but obviously it's no use to you. So what happens when I'm meditating is that I'm learning to control my thoughts. Not necessarily control my thoughts, but become aware of my thoughts and that way I can control my thoughts more. So to stay in this example of your Facebook account getting banned. Now, of course, it's happened to me too in the past couple of years and I also get the same reaction, right? I'm also stressing, but then people that have a higher awareness, a higher level of consciousness, as I like to call it, um, they have the ability to turn around those negative thoughts into positive thoughts a lot faster because you're able to recognize your thoughts faster. You're just more aware and people that are more aware, the way I look at it, if you're more aware, you are aware of the fact that you're thinking and aware of your thoughts more often. So a normal person maybe is aware of his thoughts once a day, once a month, maybe even once a year, whereas someone that meditates is aware of it a couple times throughout the day, especially when there is a spike in emotion, the level of awareness also goes up because you learned to notice this. You learn to notice this in your meditations. A lot of meditations focus on the breathing, so it increases your focus too, um, but also focuses on emotion. And the more you do this, automatically throughout your daily life, you start to focus on these thoughts a lot more. So to go back to the example, what would happen if my Facebook account got banned, uh, I got the stress response, but then I start thinking, all right, these are just thoughts right now. What do I have? Where are we, where are we at right now? And how are we going to solve this? So you're able to think clearly a lot faster, come up with a solution a lot faster and calm your mind and tell yourself that things are going to be all right, which they always will. All right. And then the next thing I mean with control is to be able to control your behavior. And this is also partly discipline, which I'll get to later. But yeah, just being in control of your life, having more control or at least a sense of control, because obviously, uh, if you think about this, maybe you can't control anything, but it's just a sense that you're in control, that you are the master of your life, that you are able to do this, that you're creating this believe in yourself, that you tell yourself that you're going to do this monk mode challenge for uh, six weeks, completing it, and that reaffirming that you can actually do anything. This just helps you to give you a better sense of control in your life and just creating more belief in yourself. Moving on to benefit number four, which is clarity. And this is one that was sort of a main topic in this six week monk mode challenge. This is something that I noticed a lot, especially in the morning. So what my routine looked like is I woke up, I read my 30 pages, then I did my 10 minute meditation, first 10 minute meditation of the day, and then I did my 30 minute workout outside. I don't know, I just felt something that my vision just became more clear. And that's literally just what happened. So number four, clarity, it's just something I noticed. It's not necessarily something that that benefits me a lot uh, beside the fact it just just gives you a really good feeling so for example when i'm running outside and i'm just looking and just felt like all my senses just worked better for some reason especially my vision but also just the way i perceived colors the way i don't know i i heard the sounds maybe it was also just because it was early outside and i just didn't hear cars and other noises but it just felt very peaceful and it felt like, yeah, 
just like how I just described it, my senses just started working better. And maybe this is also true. Maybe because there is less distraction, you start focusing more on this moment and things that you're perceiving through your senses. Because when you are watching Netflix, watching social media, the things that you perceive through your senses are so intense. Now that you skip this, you start noticing other things more intense. I don't know, it's just a theory, but it's just something I noticed that just felt really good. All right, and then the last benefit and this is maybe even the most important one is discipline. Now, of course, this is not a direct result of a monk mode challenge, but this is something that you are building, that you're training. This is one of the most important reasons why I'm doing a monk mode. It's me telling myself that I'm going to do this, that I'm going to challenge myself. Just the fact that I can tell myself that I'm going to do this and I'm not going to let anything distract me just builds a lot of discipline. And of course, discipline is already required when you're doing this. If you don't have a lot of discipline and you're going to do a challenge like this, chances are very high that you're not going to succeed. But for me, it really feels like me proving to myself that I can do anything. It's so important, especially if you're running a business that you can actually stick to what you tell yourself that you're going to do. Because in this world, in the end, it all comes down to yourself. You are completely responsible for your own life. You can't expect someone else to solve all your problems. So in the end, who are you going to rely on? On yourself. And this is so important, especially if you're an entrepreneur, because again, you're the only one you can rely on. So no one else is going to run your business. No one else is going to make you successful. So if you can't even do what you tell yourself, then how can you expect other things in your life to do well? Okay, we're almost at the end of this video, but before I'm going to end this video, I also just quickly want to talk about the downsides. Now, of course, there's also downsides to doing a challenge like this. One is your social life definitely does not improve from doing something like this. Also, for me, at the end, it kind of feels like sometimes my brain gets kind of numb because there's so little action in my life. Basically, every day is just the same. I'm working every single day. I have a routine every single day. So those are things that are not great about this. But I would say that for most people, doing a channel like this is far more benefiting than it having downsides. That being said, this was the video. If you guys have any more questions or if you want to participate with me in a future challenge, just go to my Instagram. I will post my challenges there. Um, you can just reach out to me in DM and ask me questions. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.